What's up guys, Deadly Cyclone here for the Strike YouTube channel again, and today we have the brand new, newly released Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Now this is the newer version of this guy right here that came out, I want to say a couple of years ago now, that had the uh, triggers and the paddles that you could see, see it's got four different setups for different paddles and you have trigger stops and that kind of thing so this has been by far my favorite controller since it released it's got just a really good weight to it it's got a good heft to it and compared to something like um, one of the scuff controllers like these are good and i don't have anything bad necessarily to say about scuff but they're i mean they're light they're plasticky uh, i don't really like the paddle placement so this is what I've been using mainly and you can see I only really ever use one paddle and that's usually for jumping so Fortnite Halo whatever we want to play but anyways that's not what you're here to see so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and just see what all comes with it and how it looks don't mind my slightly messy table here but uh, yeah so let's take a look at this thing so you can see we'll take a look at the box here it's a little shiny elite Series 2, what we got on the side here, just some normal items included, interchangeable d-pads, thumbsticks, it looks like there's three options this time instead of two. Uh, the paddles look a little different than they did on the other one, I think they were all kind of that L shape on the other one. You have your case, which you got with the other one, uh, charging dock, which is new. So this new one has an internal battery, and it comes with a charging dock. So you just pop it on there like you would anything else, and it charges. So you've got that dock right there. Um, thumbstick adjustment tool, that's another new thing. Um, in these, this new Series 2, you can actually adjust the tension on the thumbsticks, which is something that... A lot of people have wanted because a lot of people, including myself, think the Series 1 thumbsticks are a little too loose by default. And you get a USB-C cable, which, given this controller is supposed to be forward compatible with whatever the next Xbox is, I think there's a pretty good chance we're finally going to get USB-C for that. Which is great because I hate keeping these micro USB cables around. I have to keep one for that thing too, so I hate it. But here we go. Here it is. Nice case. As you can see, this looks very similar to the case from the other one, which I have somewhere. Um, if you look at that, there's even a USB-C port in there. So I think, and we'll see, but I think you can keep the charging dock in the case and you just set the controller on it. So pretty nice case. It weighs a lot. And that's one of the things I do love about these controllers is they feel well built. And they should for as much as they cost. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. And oh, 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 I lied. Look at that. What do we got in here? Uh, looks like a USB-C cable to me. Let me get this open here. Yep, nice braided USB-C cable, Xbox logo there. Looks pretty long, which is nice because if I tilt up here, you can see my Xbox is a decent ways away from me, and you can never have enough cables. We'll throw that aside. That's just plastic insert. Nothing else in there. Um, in the bottom here, it looks like your typical, all normal booklets and safety and whatever. So, Xbox Elite Series 2. And you can see this just kind of shows you what you get in the box. Um, what all the buttons do so you can see it has a profile button again interchangeable thumbsticks nice charging indicator um profile indicator so it looks like there's three as opposed to two on the last one which is nice on the back you got your charging pins your hair trigger locks so that's for the triggers um your paddle placement and there you go so here here's how you can see um you can actually charge the thing while it's in the case zipped up, which is kind of cool. So if you're at an airport or something and you have this thing as your Bluetooth controller for, say, your iPad to play Fortnite or whatever you're playing, you can just 
plug it in quick and go. Or you can see in the bottom left picture there, it looks like that's what it looks like with the charging dock out of the case. I know, super interesting to look through a booklet, right? Um, overall, just normal stuff. Batteries low, batteries charging lights, power, how to sync it up to your Xbox or PC. Looks like you just hold it. Da, 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 da. It sees it, blah, blah, blah. Here's some interesting stuff. Um, this was in the first one, changing the different D-pads. I always use that one. I just like how it feels. Changing the uh, paddles looks fairly similar. Joysticks looks fairly similar. And here's the new little key for tension. It looks like you just put it on there and twist it. So um, I think that's pretty much it. So let's uh, take a look here. Um, if I can do this with one hand. Apologies ahead of time for the extreme close-up as I unzip. Just use that as some ASMR. Unzip. And there we are. So, let's set this one next to it. Here's a... Move some of that stuff back, drop something, oh well. There's a pretty good look in some pretty harsh lighting at both of them. So the first thing you notice this rubberized grip that was only on the back in the first one and wasn't right here is all the way around on this one. So if I pick it up, you can see it goes all the way across the back and onto the front, which is nice. Um, other outright dis differences I see is on the first one you had your two profile slots. This one looks like a click button and you have your three it looks like. Um, D-pads, already got the one I like using it on there. The joysticks, it could be just because mine are worn down a little bit. Let's see how they feel. They definitely feel tighter than these ones. And you can also see their chrome underneath it, which is new, compared to the kind of solid metal look there. And apologies if you hear my cat yelling in the background. He likes to make as much noise as possible when I'm trying to do videos, but... Anyways, here's your other D-pad, um, more, these are smoother uh, stick placements. You got a couple, here's a, you've got concave and convex. Here's your paddles and here's your little key for changing. Let me get that in focus there. Sensitivity of the, uh, of the sticks. So, you can see we already got paddles on there. So it's just an empty slot right there. You can see that's where you can store them if you need to. But we've got paddles on there. Give you a close up look at that. You can see the charging pins. You've got the two little um, trigger stop buttons, I guess you could say sliders. And otherwise it looks pretty similar. Give you a good close up look at the front there. Nice gray color. Looks like you have a port on the bottom. You've got one for your 3.5 millimeter. And this other one, I'm actually not 100% sure. I guess that's the same one that was on this one that I apparently never used for anything. So, let's just take a look at this charging dock real quick. It looks like it's got a little bit of felt on it or something right away. So here it is. I mean, you saw how this thing was sitting in there. Those those three pins go on those three pins and it really just rests right on there. And it's pretty tight. And then if you put the cable through the hole back here, you can see in there that it goes right into the charging cable port of the controller. So I don't bore you too much with any, any more of the details, but you can see these come off, they're magnetic, just like they were before. And you can put it here, and I could say, take... Uh, do we have one of the fun ones here? Let's take uh, the rounded one. And really, it's just like, nicely magnetic. So you could change your whole, whole controller look to have kind of a little more convex, like, 
the uh, PlayStation controller does by default. So if you like that feel, you could do it there, or you can switch it here. You can really do it anywhere. I mean, they also come with the kind of longer one. If you're into games where you have to snipe a lot or you want broad, slow movements, I never really got much use out of that one, but I know a lot of people that actually did. And there's the regular D-pad. I'm probably going to keep this on just because it gives you a lot more directional control, I think, than the normal one does, but the normal one is there. Um, it looks like you can pull this whole charger out, so you can see just USB-C. So if I set that there, let's see. See how it just kind of sits on there, it looks like. Oh, huh. So it doesn't really sit as well if it's just flat, unless I'm totally doing this wrong, and it should go like this. Which I think it should. Yes, because it should line up with the hole. <laughs> there we go. And eh, never mind my mistakes. But it really just sits on there, and you can see it's even a little magnetic, it feels like. You can see if I get it on there right, it picks up the base. So that's nice. So you don't have to keep it in there. You could just set this on your uh, desk or wherever you have it. And when you're done for the day, just throw your controller on there. It charges up. That's nice, because a lot of times with this one, I will go to play, or I'll have an extended play session, and my battery will get low. I have to find a cable, and especially since it's you know, USB micro, I'd always have to find the one or two cables I still have for that since everything else is either lightning or USB-C at this point. Um, but overall, that's kind of it for now. Um, we'll give you one more kind of close-up look at that. I think it's going to be a lot I mean, it's not going to be a lot better because the first one's really good, but just holding it, it does feel better. It's got a little more weight. Uh, the triggers even have a little bit of um, texture on them, which is nice. They feel slightly more rounded up after I've been using the other one for so long. I'm not sure what sticks I'll use. I might leave this one on there and just see how it goes. I kind of like the ability to roll my finger like that, but otherwise... We'll give it some play time, see how it goes, and see what the overall impressions are. But I'm guessing they're going to be like this one and really good, except slightly better because you can now change sensitivity and things like that. Um, if you do get this or that one and you've never had them before, there is an app on the Xbox or on the PC that you can download. Um, I can't remember the exact name of it, if it's Xbox Accessories or something like that, but that's where you go to make your profiles. Um, you can remap pretty much any button. You can remap these paddles to whatever you want them to be, and that's kind of how I have it set up. So I have one paddle that's jump, and I use that in most games. So make sure to get that and play around with it. And then you can just toggle on the fly by pushing this button. So anyways, I don't want to drown on too long here. Um, this is the uh, Xbox Elite Series 2 controller that just came out from Microsoft. It is replacing this Series 1 controller that came out a couple years ago. You can see, other than a strong matte black color pretty much everywhere now. Shout out to MKBHD. Um... There are quite a few differences in this, but it's not night and day. It's little things like being able to tweak sensitivity, more rubberized grip, some texture on the triggers, a better just overall feel. So if you're out there shopping for a controller and you see the first gen one on sale, don't hesitate to get it. It's still going to be a great controller, but this is going to be the new king to beat, especially when Scorpio comes out or whatever they end up calling the next Xbox. This is forward compatible. This also works with PC. And I think this, if you're looking for a controller, get something like this. This is the best controller you can buy, hands down, at this point. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any direct questions. I can test some stuff out or take some more pictures or whatever you need. I'll try to keep posting some tech videos like this. I know I either have one coming or it's already posted about the Microsoft Surface headphones that I got when I was at Microsoft Ignite this week. Um, so check out that video or wait a couple days and check out that video if it's not up yet.